You know, I've been thinking a lot about items lately, and eventually, if you think about them long enough, you start thinking about weapons too. And the most prominent weapon type to come up is probably the sword. I mean, what's not to like about the sword? It makes you look so studly. So that's when I came up with the idea for the top 10 best swords in video games. So here's my list of the top 10 swords in video games. Since you wasn't shoehorning at all. Top 10 best swords in video games! Yeah! Let's start things off right. Soul Calibur. Everyone knows Soul Calibur's awesome. Is it the best one? Was the GameCube one on the, the GameCube? Because of the link, he was there. Remember that? That was awesome. If one of your friends came over with a different version of Soul Calibur, you'd be like, I'll put that shit away. I got this version. It's way better than your version will ever be. I hate you. Bye. Okay, let's play. Then the best strategy was just sit in the corner with your bombs, your boomerangs, and your bows. Codename Triple B Threat. And consequently spam those moves until your friends were now your ex-friends. Ha. <laughs> Fighting games are awesome. But let's get back on track because the star of this show is the weaponry and specifically the swords. And there's one sword in particular called the Soul Edge, which is the main antagonist of the entire game. Created by human hands, at first it was just a normal sword. But after being bathed in the blood of its enemies countless times, the sword turned evil and demonic. It's like a devil sword. Aw, oh, man. And of course, it's said that the sword corrupts those who use it. And the most central character to fall victim to this is actually Siegfried, who in turn becomes the evil antagonist Nightmare. So there you go. Soul Calibur, Soul Edge. Swords! Minecraft to this day is still probably one of the most popular games to be playing. It's endless play potential only squandered by the limits of your own imagination. And your free time! Now it's been a while since I've played this game. I'm pretty rusty. Now you could spend your time mining and crafting, but I prefer the more adventurous route. That is, once I work up the courage to leave my shanty house and venture forth into the world. The following is a recounting of the first night. Cooking up the food, nothing can get me here. Which furniture's gonna match this house? Oh, there, who's there? There's only outside. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. There's a zombie. No. This is it. This is it. This is the end. He's gonna break. Oh. Oh, never mind. I did it. Now it's a pretty well known fact that the diamond sword is the best sword in the game. It always takes a lot of effort to find diamonds, so once you finally get the diamond sword, it's totally worth it. Nothing beats that feeling of coming around the corner. And then... <laughs> DIAMOND! Now the only thing left to do is pimp myself out. Now it's time to put the sword to the test. Is it actually a good sword? So here we go. Test one, zombies. Test two, skeletons. Oh no, surprise test that the house is on fire from something totally random. Use the power of the sword to stop the, the fire from spreading. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this! Okay, I can't do it. Diamond Sword! It's good. What better place to look for medieval weaponry than the Forgotten Realms of Dungeons and Dragons? There are plenty of unique swords throughout the Forgotten Realms, but there is one sword that sticks out to me as being, well, one of the more, how you say, obscure weapons. So it's time for some Boulder's Gate 2 action. So now all I gotta do is uh, make a character and, uh... That's a pretty good roll! Gotta save that one for later. All right, we're in! Yay! Oh my goodness, how weird is that? There's a space hamster in this game. Whoa, maybe now I'm going to click him a bunch. Now there is quite a unique sword in Baldur's Gate 2. A little ways into the game, you'll find yourself in the sewers, and if you solve the puzzle presented, you'll end up with the sword Lilacor. And if you take the time to read the description of the sword, you'll be presented with a comedic tale. As 
the story goes, Lylacor was an eager man wanting to prove himself a hero against an evil treant. Unfortunately, he didn't really know what a treant was, and ended up walking feverishly through the cold snow and eventually doing battle with an old oak tree. He takes the oak tree home, claiming himself a hero, only to be the laughing stock of the town. It's never really said that this is the same Lylacor, but the mannerisms are said to be pretty spot on. So I guess he turned into a sword or whatever. And the reason this guy is on the list because he says the darndest things. So, are we gonna kill something now? Sick! Advice, eh? Hmm. Well, besides working on your swordsmanship, you know, besides that, uh, I'd have to think. Oh, you. Hmm. Find someone rich and kill him. Then find someone richer and kill them too. Hack and slash your way to fortune. Woohoo! Well, that's just good advice. I think you need to take better care of me. I got more chips than a blind beaver. I look like a second-rate pig poker. Okay. Murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. I keep that in mind. If I say Super Nintendo RPGs, what are the first games that come to your mind? Probably Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy VI, and Secret of Mana to name a few. But by far one of my favorite Super Nintendo RPGs is definitely Chrono Trigger. And you know what that means! It's time to go to the carnival! Yeah! Racing! Yeah! Fighting robots! Yeah! <laughs> Taking people's food with no repercussions! Oh no! Chrono Trigger is the time-traveling 16-bit RPG masterpiece. And masterpiece isn't a word thrown around too often, unless you're at a barbecue. There's just something so appealing about time travel and the ability to go wherever you want, whenever you want. See the same places at different times and even see relatives of the characters you've met. One of the more interesting character stories was actually that of Frog, though. Once a squire under the knight Cyrus, he went up against Megus, who killed Cyrus and turned him into a frog. Throughout the game, Chrono and company find shards of a mysterious sword known to possess great power. After finding the missing pieces and traveling back to 12,000 BC to retrieve some dreams, though, you can reforge the legendary sword in hopes of stopping Megas. And that sword is called the Mazamoon. I think what's so unique about this sword is that it's not meant for the character you're playing as. It's not meant for Chrono. In fact, the only character in the game to wield the sword is Frog. He's the only one who wields the reforged Mazamoon. But as many of us know now, Oh uh, yes, uh, we got some spoilers incoming. Over. Roger that. Over. You do defeat Megus, but the true canon of the story is that Frog does not end his life, and instead decides to spare Megus because killing him would not bring back his old mentor. I guess you could say Frog couldn't pull... the trigger? Am I You know, originally for this list, I was going to put the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts on here. Like this? <laughs> but then you know I was talking to Poodle Moose about this list. Hey. 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 We eventually got to talking about this list, and he tried to guess all of the entries. And one of his guesses was actually the Prince of Persia dagger. At first I was like, I cannot believe you would guess the dagger. This is a top 10 swords list. <laughs> but then I thought about it. I mean, a dagger is like a, a really small sword. Also, the ability to time travel is really cool, even though it's just small rewinds. And then I decided, hey, the Prince of Persia dagger. I mean sword. Time travel! Look at me, I'm Cloud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you, man. Get out of my way. Here it comes, man. Here it comes, man. I'm gonna get you. Buster Sword! Final Fantasy VII is probably one of the most highly praised of the franchise, right after VI, I'd say. I'm not gonna brag, but I have been known to play a little Final Fantasy VII in my day. Finishing all the side quests and secrets to getting that Knights of the Round material was actually one of my favorite accomplishments from this game, and probably from games in general. In fact, some of my fondest gaming memories have been from this game. But let's talk about the weaponry. The Buster Sword has always been an iconic weapon from the very beginning. But why is it so popular? Is it because bigger's always better? Alright, it's time to think of some good ideas for my next video. Wait a sec, that's it! Subtle dick jokes. Perfect. 
I've always wondered how Cloud could wield this apparently 5 to 6 foot long sword with such ease. I mean, if you look at the concept arts from the strategy guides in the manuals, I mean, he looks as skinny as me. Brutal Moose, or Jimmy, Youngtown, PVG. But he wields this epic sized sword like it's nothing. Hurry, we gotta get out of here, this place is gonna blow! Yep, got it, push the button at the same time, let's do this! Okay, well that was, I was just checking out your timing on that, let's do this! Alright, well the next one we'll definitely get, let's do this! God, just, okay? Hey, what's this guy doing, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> hey there, how's it going? You taking a whiz? Going to the whiz palace? This list is about swords, right? Okay, let's be completely honest here. I love Warcraft. Okay, maybe I should say I loved Warcraft. I think most of you guys are in the same boat as me. You played World of Warcraft for four to five years off and on, but now the idea of going back just makes you seem weak. Like you have no control over what you do. You'll always have fond memories of playing, but realistically, you just don't have the time for it anymore. But why talk about Warcraft? Well, because there's a pretty important sword from this series, and all of you probably already know what the sword is. You smarty pants. You stinky smarty pants. That sword, of course, is Frostmourne. The simple version of the story reads that the old Lich King, Narzul, was a disembodied spirit linked with Frostmourne, and forever being controlled by Kil Jaden and the Burning Legion. He set into motion plans to escape, and unluckily for Arthas Menethil, he was seduced into using the sword, which set into motion the events of World of Warcraft, leading to his eventual demise. Plus, the sword looks freaking cool. It's blue. Also, let's be honest, all you really did was log on for like five minutes and jump around on Orgrimmar Bank half the time. Look, I play, wow, I could do anything or go anywhere I would like to ever go. I guess I will sit on the bank now for the rest of my day. <laughs> Money well spent. Now, most people probably would not share this opinion with me, and a lot of you will probably disagree with me outright, but I'm of the opinion that Final Fantasy VIII is actually my favorite of the series. What's up, you wanna go? Yeah, let's do this! Final Fantasy VIII is the best thing you know! Let's go! Let's go right now! Ah, uh, Man... Ah. Uh... Where's that guy keep coming from? And hell, I'll even give you that the draw system was one painful son of a bee. But there's just something about this game that I love so much. It's like it doesn't matter all those faults it has because it's the one for me. It's because gunblades are awesome. Just look at this. Wow, it's exactly like that! What's great about this weapon is that you can totally make one on your own. Get yourself a gun, get yourself a knife, tip it all together. What do you get? A highly impractical weapon? No. A super dangerous weapon? No. A gun blade? Yeah! Gun blades are cool. I think you know I can dose the actions of the fears. If they like to make a gun blade, they probably shouldn't. That's a highly dangerous and stupid, you stupid head. It's obviously a bad idea to make a custom weapon out of duct tape and already highly dangerous objects. I think she will take no responsibility and end up maiming yourself, but he will admit that gun blades are pretty awesome and they should be a real thing. I mean, gun blades make you so cool that you kill a T Rex if you want to. Everyone knows those things are extinct. I mean, what do we know about T Rexes? They're big, they're scary, and they have tiny arms. And why is that important? It's important because they can't use gun blades. You ever seen a T Rex use a gun blade? No. You haven't. They probably wouldn't even be extinct if they could. Just imagine it. Hey, look at me, the T Rex are. I'm gonna cut you, man. I got this gun blade all over here. I'm gonna get you. I may have these tiny arms, but if you just come here, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. Now I'll admit that my bias is showing quite a bit for this entry, but it's Star Wars. Lightsabers are cool deal with it. You know, subjectively speaking, I like Star Wars games because of the source material, but I'm pretty sure by any standards at all that Star Wars games are pretty average at best. And of course, I don't think I'm out of line here by saying that many of us would consider using the lightsaber the best part of any Star Wars game. And the best one that I could think of that uses it really well is, of course, Jedi Academy. Also, you get to run over people with tauntauns. Hey there, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going there, buddy? Hey. Come here, where you going? Where are you going? I just wanna play? I just wanna play with you? You know, one of the great things about this game is how invincible you could feel. Look at me just cut through these guys. I'm unstoppable. Let's be 
be honest, you saw this coming. No matter what you think, it's undeniable that the Master Sword is one of the greatest swords in gaming history. It's not just a sword, it's almost like an ancient legend of its own at this point. It's so iconic, people who don't even play the game could probably recognize it from somewhere, but they might not know just where it's from. It's said to be the only sword to defeat Ganon, the Prince of Darkness, and is the staple sword of the Legend of Zelda series. It appears in nearly all of the Zelda games, but let's be honest, the most pleasing appearances are probably Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, and Wind Waker. In Link to the Past, it's just sitting there in the forest. You knew you were in the right place when you discovered the area. In Ocarina of Time, you finally got all of the spiritual stones and you play that tune, and you're in the sacred place where the sword is kept, and you're locked away for years after pulling it. And in Wind Waker, you traveled the seas, and in its depths, you found the castle where it was sealed away. All these moments were built up so well, making you feel like you're really accomplishing something. But getting the sword was never the end. Getting the sword was literally just the first step in an epic quest to save the world. And that's why it belongs at the number one Well, this clearly isn't gonna work. I mean, they're just gonna think that this is some sort of cop-out or something. Like, I can't even think of anything better than the Master Sword to put at number one. If only I had somebody to vouch for me on this one. Hey. PBG! PBG, you gotta tell them, you have to tell them that the Master Sword is the best sword. The Master Sword isn't the greatest sword in a video game. What are you, an idiot? Well, what do you mean? You're, you're, you're the Zelda guy. You're wearing a Zelda shirt. <laughs> What are, that's irrelevant! It's a straw man argument, and you know it! Well then tell me, PBG, what is the best sword? I don't know, like that one from the game with the guy who had that hair that he lost, and then he had a little less hair, but then he grew his hair back through the power of the sword! It's called the Hair Sword! I can't believe you would come on my show and tell them that the Master Sword isn't the best sword! <laughs> that's it, PBG! Present your blade! Wait! The Master Sword really is the best sword in the video game. What am I thinking? I'm sorry, Space Hamster. Let's be friends again. Well, I'm glad we came to that conclusion, PBG. Yeah, you know, I don't even know why I cared that much. It's not like it even matters. It's a top ten. It's all opinion. Who even watches this stuff? Oh, hey, how's it going, man? I'm good. Thanks for asking. It's me, SH. You should follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Look at the birdie. I should probably thank you properly for watching my video, so thank you. And if you want to stay updated on any of my future videos, you know what to do. You can click here for my other videos that I did the last time, which was a while ago, and I'm sorry, but it takes a while to make these videos, so give me that crap. Also, why not leave a comment down below telling me what your top five swords are? Maybe you can convince me that my list is crap. Think that battle does it? Okay. I'm going.